Hi Taurus, welcome to your 2017 astrological forecast. It's Rena here. So I wanted to tell you about some of the upcoming transits of the year 2017 because it's the end of 2016 and this is when we post these kinds of things. It's my first time doing this and it's been very interesting to determine how to even format these, whether I should go chronologically or what. And I've decided just to go by how it feels the best for me because some of these transits are like ongoing stories. They started uh, five years ago or six years ago or in the case of Pluto, eight years ago. And so it's not something that is just for one year year's time or even like in Saturn's case it is currently going through Sagittarius and it has a two and a half year trip through one sign so that is longer than for instance a Jupiter transit which is one year in length usually you know these are approximations but you get the drift so let me start with Saturn because I have it at the top of the list here so let me start with Saturn because it's at the top of my list and Saturn in Sagittarius is the eighth house and that is the house that Scorpio rules in the universal chart. It's the house of sex and death and other people's money and so Saturn is a teacher. Now in looking at some of the interpretations that astrologers give for uh, the transit of Saturn in the 8th house. I feel that a lot of them are way too negative. Uh, a lot of them speak of restriction when it comes to um, other people giving you money. And like even if you have a partner that you may be forced to do the lion's share of the earning. And I don't think that that's true at all. What I think Saturn does is it can get you down to brass tacks and so it can make you organized it's like a boot camp instructor and I don't think I made that up I think I read that somewhere because I I sometimes I read so much and I and I'm thinking okay this is a great analogy and I kind of store it in the back of my mind I don't think I came up with that one but I love it because it can you know you know challenge you but I still think it can put you in shape and these other people that are talking about limitations that is with the you know the lack consciousness mentality that you look at Saturn in that way if you can see Saturn as helping um, to kick your butt in order to get you to do something it it works out a lot better and also think about it this way if some if something outside of you comes along to kick your butt and you say you know screw you I don't want to do things your way then yeah maybe it will limit you in that area and test you and you know give you a karmic lesson but if you let go of your need to control and if you surrender and you know go with the flow you can you know capitalize on it so with the 8th house, it could be that maybe your spouse does have a uh, an income that is less than what they did before, but you're able to have a better quality of life in other ways. Maybe your spouse was working many hours and now you have a chance to enjoy their company. Um, they say nature abhors a vacuum. So if you're with somebody who is making less money maybe you're going to make more money you know you don't have to think of it in terms of like oh there's only a limited amount and I certainly can't make more money you know how do you know that how do you know have you even tried and you know it's just like these very pessimistic attitudes that people take and they even bring into the realm of interpreting astrology um, the other thing too is that you know a possibility is like you know with sex for instance perhaps there is some reason why you are quote-unquote forced 
to, you know, be not having it so much with your partner. Maybe they are um, going through something that prevents them from, from expressing themselves in that way. Even if that's the case, you can still have a richer relationship in a different way. Again, it's how you frame things that makes all the difference. And by the way, uh, Saturn will be leaving the eighth house at the end of 2017. I believe it's on the 20th of December, but don't quote me on that. Just, you know, close to the end of 2017. And so that means it's going to be going into the sign of Capricorn, which should be a very nice uh, time for Taurians because um, it's a fellow earth sign, so there's a trine aspect, and it'll be going into the ninth house. And uh, speaking of the ninth house, we already have a hit to the ninth house. Um, uh, I guess uh, Saturn will be joining Pluto, which has been in your ninth house since 2008. The ninth house is a, I think you would call it a thought house. I, I'm probably not saying it correctly. A mind house, a thought house. It's you have the third, the 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 a mental house. That's what I meant to say. The third, the ninth, the third, the sixth, and the ninth, and I guess a twelfth would qualify as that as well. All the mutable signs, okay? And the mutable signs are the idea people. So you're talking about. Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Now, um, you know, the, the air signs, which are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, are the mental, um, the intellectual signs. But they're more about communication. The mental signs, the mutable signs, are all dealing with ideas in their own elements. So, for instance, with Virgo, it's practical ideas. With um, Pisces, it's the uh, spiritual, creative ideas. With Sagittarius, it's the philosophical ideas. And with Gemini, it's the, I would say, just the intellectual ideas, the, you know, the academic, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, but actually, I should say that that Sagittarius deals with academia. So maybe with um, Gemini, it's more of literature and also journalism. But in any case, you have Pluto in this ninth house, which is Sagittarius's house. Now, um, the other thing about the ninth house is besides uh, higher learning, it deals with philosophy and religion. So any belief systems that you have. Now, this could also be ones that you grew up with. If you grow up as a Baptist with Pluto in the ninth house, you may end up in 2024 when uh, Pluto exits this house, you may end up um, a shaman. Um, you know, you somebody who is a devout Catholic could end up an atheist. You're... you're your uh, belief system undergoes radical change. But it's it's not like Uranus being in the ninth house where it's constant um, surprises being bombarded um, on you. What does it say bombarded to you? Been, well, whatever. Um, being bombarded by uh, constant shifts that are occurring, these uh, catalysts for change. This is, the, the Pluto is like more of a teardown project. So it's like um, gut. I, 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 I've said this analogy before, and I can't, I can't think of it, um, where you just like a gut rehab, okay, where you just like tear down the entire house, um, you know, even the guts of the house, okay? And this is affecting your belief system, or I should say belief systems. And this can also relate to foreign travel. So some of you may take a trip that changes your entire being. Okay, but this would be a long distance trip, not somewhere, um, you know, for instance, if you live in the United States to another state, 
nearby or if you live in Europe to a nearby country. This is something, you know, very far away and it really, you know, challenges your world view, but it's it's all for the best. Pluto can be sometimes, you know, in talking about your natal Pluto where it is in your natal chart it can indicate the most transformative area, but it can be a very traumatic experience that, that you know, creates this. So um, just realize that dra dramatic experiences really help to shape our, our lives. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to be something bad. That's the important thing also to kind of put, put out there. But then at the end of 2017, you're going to have Saturn joining that ninth house. So that should get very interesting for 2018. Um, but I'm not going to talk about Saturn in the ninth house since that's only going to be for a couple of weeks at the end there. Um, Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion. So that would be very uh, exciting for anybody to see where that's going to be in their chart. And for you, Taurus, it's going to be in the sixth house of health and the workplace or just the workload itself. It doesn't have to be career. So if you're working, you know, if you're bagging groceries, um, you know, it could be that grunt type of work too. It's just the work itself. So sometimes people get jobs that they don't really plan to make into their life purpose, but um, the sixth house can relate to anything regarding work itself or the workplace. Um, it can deal also with pets. So if you, you know, are a pet lover and you already have pets, you may add, um, you know, quite a bit to your collection of pets. Um, it could, because Jupiter tends to expand in that area, it could be that you see something beneficial happen health-wise. If you've been struggling with something, you know, you can just by, on a whim, you can find out something that is very helpful or you can meet somebody that, you know, even it seems rather randomly, who is very instrumental in helping you to heal in some way. Jupiter in the sixth house can bring luck through colleagues. And uh, even just having a wonderful workplace environment. Uh, let's see. And you know, oh yeah, the one of the biggie things about this is that the sixth house can also, with Jupiter there, can mean that you just have an extra workload. Now, some of you may be saying, I don't want more work, um, but it can be something financially lucrative because if you have an excess of work, it means that you have, uh, you know, more than you know what to do with. And that means that you're not going to have be underemployed. So you can look at it in a good way. I think of, I, you know, think of the 10 of wands when I, when I think of uh, Jupiter in the sixth house you know, kind of being like on the risk of burnout because you have so much work. But um, Taurus people tend to like to, to take life very um, casually and, you know, with ease, with great ease. And you don't like people to rush you and pressure you. But um, you're also great workhorses when you get down to brass tacks, when you really are in the groove you can really get a lot accomplished because you're a fixed sign. So you have a tendency to just, once you can get started, it's hard to get to stop you. Um, you have that endurance that fixed signs have, that persistence. So, okay, what else? Venus is your ruler. You probably know that. And it is going to be retrograding. Um, this is, starts on the 4th of March. And it will be until the four, the fifteenth of uh, April, and this will be uh, retrograding from the sign Aries to Pisces. So this will affect your twelfth and then eleventh houses. Okay. Now, uh, the twelfth house you have for for. Um, 
Venus to, to retrograde in the 12th house means that there may be a karmic relationship, and this would be particularly with a romantic relationship that you're dealing with, some of you, maybe not all of you, and this will kind of be under review, and it goes back into your 11th house, and you're going to be thinking, okay, how does this fit into my goals? You know, this person, is this person really um, helping me uh, to, to have the life of my dreams? Because... A lot of times people get tripped up with this notion of soulmates, twin flames, and any kind of relationship that seems karmic. Um, you know, sometimes I get clients who say, yeah, a psychic told me that this particular person is a, is a karmic relationship. And what I typically say is, yeah, maybe it is a karmic relationship. Does that mean it's a good relationship? A karmic relationship to me, can mean that you have this energetic bond, but I don't think that it necessarily means it's a healthy bond. I feel, and this is totally my own <laughs> opinion, has no you know universal truth necessarily attached to it, I feel that sometimes in past lives, we are bonded to other people through traumatic experiences, and so that can lead us to continue that relationship over and over again, but it's not necessarily a healthy situation. So an example of this would be if one partner murders the other. Now that's a crazy concept, right? I mean, you know, that's a horrific concept. But let's say, let's say one spouse murders the other because they are totally controlling and they are totally terrified of losing that person. Okay, that, you know, that, that, that dr dramatic act, I feel, can keep those people in a very negative connection from life to life. And the person who is the victim may in another lifetime, I mean, it may go back and forth where one person is doing the um, the abuse and the other person is taking the, the, the abuse. And that's because they both are stuck in that cycle. So just remember that if something feels familiar, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a healthy situation. You have to look at the actual situation. And it's amazing to me. I think sometimes people, they don't want to see that. So they construct this fantasy, oh, we're karmic. We have this karmic relationship, even though the relationship is really crap, craptastic, where it's very um, on again, off again. Um, you know, there may be cheating, there may be lying, you know, just all the things that, that are um, dysfunctional. But then the person like builds this fantasy of like, oh, we're just like these karmic lovers and that's why we're having all these problems. And, you know, I mean, maybe that's true for some people, but I think, I think that you have to be pragmatic about it in terms of being able to just have a good relationship. I mean, if you, if you just want to live in the fantasy, then, you know, it's, it's on you because you may not get what you want. So, uh, yeah, so you're going to have that review. Another thing about Venus that I wanted to mention is, is that Venus will be in your sign, Taurus, from June 7th until July 5th. So this just makes you extra attractive. And Taurians and Librans, because they're ruled by Venus, tend to have physical attract attractiveness anyway. Uh, in some in some fashion, and by the way, it doesn't even have to be just the conventional beauty. It can be um, even on a more a subtler level where people don't know why they're drawn to you. And then you have Venus in the fifth house of romance from September twentieth to the 14th of October, and that can be very good for romance, anybody who's single looking for romance. 
And let me see, have I left anything out? Oh, one thing I wanted to say, your new moon in Taurus is going to be on the 26th of April. So um, happy birthday. This is your new moon. It, it is on an early degree of um, Taurus. I believe it's six degrees. So um, for those of you who are born who have a, a rising sign after that six degree mark or uh, a, what do you call it, a, um, a date after the 26th, if your birthday is after that day for your sun sign, um, you're actually going to have to wait until till June to, when there's a... Um, a new moon in, or actually May, when there's a new moon in Gemini for your actual, you know, solar return birthday because this new moon will fall in your 12th house. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I believe the new moon in Gemini is, in, is like the 25th of um, May. But uh, I, I just... Um, I don't have my ephemeris out at the current moment. So the one thing I'm going to leave you with is that there's more activity in that 11th house of hopes and wishes that, are, that is more long term. You have Neptune and Chiron taking up residence in Pisces in that 11th house, Taurus. Both of these are, I wouldn't say necessarily challenging energies, but they're both energies that ask of you something on a deeper emotional level okay with neptune it's about your dreams i was just thinking of that song by stevie next dreams or you could say fleetwood mac you know have you any dreams you'd like to sell is that what they say um what are your dreams and neptune is either going to make you more idealistic or more deluded. I don't really think that people are ever deluded when they have certain dreams. They may have grandiose notions, but there's always a kernel of truth as far as I'm concerned. Um, and so I never would suggest that people laugh at their dreams, but that you really try to Put them into play. Don't just, you know, leave them in the realm of fantasy. With Neptune there, you may be tempted to just fantasize and not act. And um, Chiron is the wounded healer. I love that Chiron is also transiting Pisces, as is Neptune. I have, I have Chiron in Pisces. And I also have Saturn in Pisces. So I'm well aware of this. And I have it in the 11th house too. Um, so this is like real for me. Um, Chiron is the wounded healer and it's an asteroid. And it's currently in Pisces. So it's residing in Taurus's 11th house. Okay. It can heal you. Okay. But it's also showing you where you need healing. So... Um, Taurus, these are long-term transits, okay? So it's something you may never see again in your lifetime. Um, well, you probably won't. I don't know how long a Neptune transit is, but it's pretty darn long, okay? So while it's in your 11th house, it gives you inspiration, but it also makes you painfully aware of you know, the fact that you don't have something. So you have to be able to reconcile the things that you have not accomplished, you know, um, that you may have dreamed about and say, why didn't you accomplish those things? And maybe it shows that you didn't, you gave up, you know, you allowed the world to tell you that you couldn't do something. You allowed your parents, you allowed, you know, the conditioning that is so prevalent in our society. And it's not just, I'm not, I don't want to blame just parents because parents, I, I don't want to say victims, but they are. They're victims of their parents, but they're victims of the larger society. I don't like the word victim because then it implies 
powerlessness, but they they fell prey to it too. So we we have to forgive those people who gave us these witch messages or these negative messages about um, whatever and take responsibility for fulfilling our dreams. And that means even if you are 50 or 70 or 20 and feeling like I'm just a college kid, who, you know, whatever age you're, you are listening to this, if you're a Taurus person, honor your dreams. Just don't get lost in them, I guess is what I would say. So I'm going to leave that there, Taurus. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you'd like a, you know, personal look at your natal chart, which is going to be much more, um, you know, geared towards your exact time of birth. And so it's going to have an unequal house system. And some of these things may be totally different for you. Please click on the link below to my store. Otherwise, have a wonderful 2017. Bye.